Hi and welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, some interesting piece of tech I discovered recently. As you may see right here in the front of the camera is just a simple data and uh, charging cable with the usual uh, strange words praising how good the product might be like we have here support fast cable. But is this just a simple USB cable? Because by looking at the uh, packaging, there is nothing on here to suggest otherwise. Let's continue and uh, unpack this uh, cable. Once again, it looks like an ordinary flat USB charging cable. So let's uh, plug it into a power bank and see if we can uh, get it to charge the device. I have a power bank... Uh, right here let's uh, try with this uh, sports camera so it appears the cable is uh, working fine charging this uh, device without any issues but it's just another cheap usb cable coming from china what's the big deal you might uh, ask by now you might have noticed the audio quality has changed and uh, it's not a problem with my camera. I just overplayed the uh, audio coming from a different source over the video. Okay, so I stopped the audio overlay and went back to the uh, normal audio recorded by the camera. The source of the audio recording uh, you just heard earlier was uh, this USB cable. And that's not all it can do. It can also reply with the physical location of the device if I query it with the right command. I know, quite an interesting little gadget. That was my first thought as I discovered this a couple of months ago. So if we take a closer look, if we look at this uh, USB Type A plug, we might notice that it's a bit larger than what you would find on the market these days in terms of USB charging cables. I can see that because I have seen quite a fair number of cables but uh, to the untrained eye this uh, will look like a plain simple USB cable. And there is also this uh, seam which kind of looks out of place on the connector. But if you pull on this uh, cover gently it will slide revealing a SIM card inside. So the designers of this gadget basically managed to cram a mobile phone in this connector shell and that's really impressive. There is no other way to call this. It's a spy tool. You place a SIM card inside and then you have various options for spying on whoever is using this cable. The gadget takes power from the uh, USB cable itself, so it needs to be uh, plugged in to be powered. But then it has uh, three basic operating modes. You can query it via text message and it will reply with the uh, position coordinates. You can call it and it will automatically answer so you can listen on the conversation. Or you can set it to automatically initiate a call to your number once a certain audio level is exceeded. So you can listen into a conversation as soon as the target starts talking nearby the tracking device. A device like this to me at least looks like something out of the NSA, CIA or spy movies or even the uh, real life because the various document leaks online uh, show that devices like this really exist in the NSA toolbox. In fact, in various leaked documents, you will find the device called Cottonmouth, which is basically the same thing, a USB plug which has been modified to include hardware implant uh, with uh, wireless connectivity and the ability to load exploits on the target computer. This device, on the other hand, does not have any ability in connecting with the uh, USB port that it is being connected to. It just... Uh, uh, takes power from the port, the data lines are not connected to the device itself. Now I'm thinking there are a few white hat uses for a gadget like this, like you could leave it inside your car connected to the head unit USB power port 
and then you could track your car if it ever gets stolen but mostly i think it will be used for illegal spying on people and that's not all that worries me about this uh, device as i was searching for information i was trying to find more commands or uh, operating modes because uh, there isn't uh, much info in the uh, small manual they give you inside the package by the way the small manual looks like this so they only tell you uh, how you can uh, call in and listen on the conversation but they don't give you much info about the uh, commands this uh, device support so i was googling for more information and i found this uh, blog where a guy already did a lot of reverse engineering on this cable so i will link his work in the description below for your reference it's a very interesting read and there i learned the second biggest worry about a device like this while in operation it will make requests to a server which may or may not be used to access your location data also at startup the device seems to be accessing all the information on your sim card like the contacts stored there so it might or it might not pass that information through to the uh, chinese server but as the author of the work points out it's likely that they just used a default um, a software stack built for the MediaTek chipset they're using so that might have had a default config for a mobile phone which would be the normal use case scenario for that chipset and if that's the case it might be normal to access the contacts on the sim card at startup so it might not be passing those to the uh, Chinese server however the device will make some queries via GPRS to uh, uh, the server which is uh, hosted at gpsui.net and that is related in a way to a full featured tracking interface that you can access with the uh, login credentials that you obtain from the device itself by testing by texting it the aqb command but we can't know for sure what kind of information it sends there because to do that you would need to spoof a cell and uh, sniff all the GPRS traffic that the device initiates. The website hosted at gpsui.net is a full feature tracking interface and the position of the SIM tracker will be shown with a car logo on the map. The device itself does not have GPS for precise tracking but relies on the information it gets from the base station to determine the location. That might mean the actual location of the device is a few blocks away on the map. So that's all the accuracy you're gonna get. The interface also gives you the option of adding more of these trackers under your account and it also stores the tracking information so you're able to view its history. Through the interface you can also change various settings of the device itself so it means it does that through the GPRS data connection. One important aspect I was uh, interested in testing is the ability to remain quiet and not send out any EMI to close by radios or similar systems. Because if you have this plugged into your car's radio USB plug and it starts making those noises when it initiates a call, it might be strange and it might give it away. So I've tested that and at least in my car it doesn't have that effect. But it might be that my particular head unit is well shielded so it might be causing those uh, noises on some uh, older head units now i know you're gonna want to take a look uh, inside this thing so let's do a proper teardown and reveal the circuit board inside i'm gonna first remove the sim card and now it certainly looks like i could split this in two at this point it looks like the USB jacket is holding it together okay so we're in just look at the tiny antenna they're using it's uh, printed on a piece of um, flexible uh, PCB it's like copper on uh, captain tape I'm wondering how they're getting uh, good rece reception with uh, a single type of antenna for the four bands that the, the modem supports. 
Okay, so the architecture is pretty simple here. We have a pass-through connection for the uh, USB uh, data lines. The board does not interfere with the uh, USB data lines at all. And then we have two main chips. One is the uh, MediaTek MT6261, which uh, is a low-cost smartphone slash uh, phone chipset, which is rather closed source. You can't find uh, too much information on it. And it's already pretty old. It has been replaced with a newer model. And then there is uh, this uh, second chip, which is the RDA6626, which is a uh, quad band uh, front end chip designed specifically for um, low end mobile phones or GSM modems. Other than these two, you will only find a couple of uh, passives in here. It's basically the slimmest phone design you can get working. It has the bare minimum. And here is the microphone picking up the uh, conversations. Just imagine the possibilities if we would have access to the documentation of the MediaTek chipset or the software development kit for this chip. Hackers and makers could potentially build very interesting devices based on such a simple design. You would only need a serial port to interface this to various other things. You could even uh, make it smaller than it uh, already is by cutting off the uh, USB uh, plug part of the PCB. And right now the whole PCB is uh, something over 3 centimeters, but this can be slimmed down to about uh, 2 centimeters or maybe 2.2 centimeters. So you can potentially get it to be much smaller than it already is. And uh, that's another idea as a spy device. You could potentially make this smaller and hide it in various other places where you have a 5 volts supply. One example would be of course a uh, power bank which uh, could host a device like this um, very nicely. But with a downside it will uh, drain the battery if you don't recharge it. So the possibilities are endless, but uh, none are possible while everything is locked and uh, closed source. I like the fact that instead of uh, using a thick PCB, they just uh, doubled the PCB on the connector area to get to the uh, USB uh, thickness. So I will uh, place some links in the description uh, below with uh, links where you can uh, find this uh, cable. But if you do get one of these, make sure you don't use it outside the law because I'm sure in most places spying on people is illegal. I hope you found this uh, video interesting. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.